Hey, if you're watching this video right now, then that means that you just got your hands on the six figure macro. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to download the macro, import the macro into your Xactimate, and exactly how you import the macro into the estimates that you're using so you can use this macro as early as today. So first things first, if you're viewing this video, then you should be on the page that has the six figure macro download link somewhere. It might not look exactly like this, but it's gonna look similar. Maybe the page changed something like that, but no matter what, there should be a button somewhere where you can actually download the file. As of right now, as of the recording of this video, it's in the corner, so I'm gonna click on download. So it's gonna download, I see it's downloaded right there. I'm gonna to go to the downloads folder. I had downloaded it once before this video, but it's right here. So once you open this video, these are all the actual macros. These are just ESX files. It's the uh, typical file that an estimate uh, is inside of Xactimate, it's .esx. From here, since this is in a zip file, uh, sometimes it might be a little tricky. You might not be able to just click and drag these things into your Xactimate. It actually wants it uh, usually inside of a folder. So I'm just gonna make sure that they're all highlighted and I'm gonna copy them. Now I'll jump over to my desktop and I will create a folder. I'll just call it uh, six figure macro. Really doesn't matter too much. All right, so I'll go in there and control V. I'm gonna paste those ESX files directly in there. I'll highlight them again. Let me see if I get any better luck dropping that in and I will. Now, what it's telling me is that these files already exist in my Xactimate because I already have the six-figure macro. I've, I've been had the six-figure macro. So I'm just going to actually skip that, but it shouldn't give you any trouble. It should just drop right in there. Um, now, what I will tell you also, there is one other uh, method. If you do have trouble getting the six-figure macro in through that method, then you can manually import them into Xactimate. And the way that you would do that uh, once you're in your Xactimate dashboard just like this, go to the top right corner where you see data transfer. Click on that. You want to make sure it's set to folder and retrieve. Then you're going to go to browse. Go to your uh, desktop wherever you created that file and then just highlight that. Click OK. Select items and then they will pop up once again. Select one of them and if you hold control, you hold the control button down and then the letter A, it'll highlight all of them. And then you can click on the retrieve button. And once again, it's gonna do the, uh, the same thing there. And once again, I'm just gonna skip right through that. So now let's say you've got all of your six figure macro, the actual files in there, you're looking good. And now you actually just wanna use it. Here is a quick crash tutorial on how you'll be able to actually use your six figure macro. So you have your file. Just click on the little project tab, the little blue tab on the top left corner. Then once you get in there, go to copy from project. Okay. Drop the list down from where it says copy or project to copy from. You want to click on that. So the way that the files are named, they will appear right at the top, which is great. So I'm going to use the general one, drop that in. Now I'm just going to click check off scope, copy. Now it's going to go away. It's going to come right back. Now, when I go to my sketch tab, things are gonna be a little bit different now. I'm just gonna put some price list in, don't care what it is. Okay, so now things are a little bit different. Now, if I drop this down, I have coverage A dwelling, coverage B other structures. Um, if you live in a state where that's not coverage B, just change it. The great thing about the six figure macro is that it's, this is not something that needs to stay the same no matter what. There, uh, there's going to be different line items that you're going to want to have inside of your six-figure macro depending on what part of the country that you're in. There's a handful of different versions of the six-figure macro built inside or saved inside of that uh, zip file. And from there, tailor it to your own. If you deal with textured ceilings a lot, make sure you have line items in there for textured ceilings. It's whatever line items that you are most commonly uh, faced with, those are the ones that you wanna have within your reach. The six figure macro is set up so that they're organized for you in a specific way, but even I still today change things around and even ExactWare is gonna come out with new line items from time to time and it's up to you to actually put those line items in. If you have the six figure macro, then you will get all the updates from this point forward, but it's still up to you to change it the way that you want. So from here, if you're dealing with 
let's say uh, a roof, a wind damage claim. You had, you're replacing the roof and you had some damage, some water damage to the second floor. Then all I would do is just make sure that there's no first level and that there's no basement level. If you're, if you download the six figure macro and you're from the state of Florida, you don't need to delete that basement level every single time you go into an uh, estimate because you don't have any basements in Florida. So just go into the actual file, uh, just like it was any other estimate inside of Xactimate and delete that tab from there. Um, if you're in an area, say you're in the Metro DC area and you're dealing with a lot of three story townhomes, then it might be smart to actually add in another tab for the third level. So now we have that, we have our exterior tab, we have our second level tab. Uh, maybe there's no fencing that we have to worry about, so I can just get rid of that uh, coverage B other structures. Then we go over to our estimate items and see we have the remnants to our tree here. We can start to delete things as we need them, whatever we need to do. Um, we dig our line items out of these um, folders here. We can highlight them all, control C then dump them into our roof. And then from there, we just really delete the line items that we don't need. We keep the ones that we do. And if we have to dig one out that we don't usually encounter that often, then we uh, search for it there. The overall goal is to search for line items as least as possible. We want we can delete line items way faster than, than we can actually find them. So we want to delete them, but we don't want to go overboard either with having to delete line item after line item in every single estimate. Just keep those that you encounter the most within arm's length. So when we're all done with our macro, we always make sure that we delete the, uh, uh, the folder. Uh, that says delete as you go through the actual line items in the um actually in each folder if you notice um there you will encounter different little notes on there like this one right here click 3d box and adjust uh to automatically calculate that means on this line item here i want to click on this 3d box and set it to automatically calculate waste. Now, if you're working with an insurance carrier that doesn't want you to automatically calculate waste, they just want you to do 10% on gables, 15% on hip roofs, then you would delete that and replace this note here with something else. Uh, includes 15% waste factor for hip type roofing or 10% waste factor for gable type roofing. You want to tailor each macro to the client that you're working with. You don't wanna tailor it to the peril that you're working with because then you'll have between the different estimating guidelines that you have to follow with all the different insurance carriers, then you're gonna to have to have a hundred different macros. And if you wanna update your macros, then that's a whole day. So you wanna have macros set in place for each different unique set of estimating guidelines that you're gonna be dealing with. So for this particular one on the general, we generally, I just like to let Xactimate do the automatic calculation there. That's how I know that it's be, that your starter strip is being accounted for, that your ridge cap is being accounted for, all that good stuff. So now there is one huge rule that you always must remember to follow when you are doing, when you are working with the six figure macro and that is always to reprice. Once you're done with everything, go to the blue tab, the project tab, go there, drop down to the reprice button, click on that. The important thing about this button is the, your actual file, the file where you are pulling all of these line items from, the file that you're copying everything from, you don't know where that price list is from. That price list could have been from a year ago in a geogra in an area that you are a thousand miles away from. So the line item pricing is going to be different. You're welcome to go in now, go into all those ESX files and update the price list to something that's more local to you. It's gonna have less of an impact on the way it looks on how far off the numbers are to where you are right now. But no matter what, even if you did do that, you are still going to want to come in here and click on reprice so you get the most accurate pricing um, that is reflected in whatever the zip code is and whatever the date is at that present time on that estimate that you're working on. Now, just another heads up, whenever you do reprice, just always make sure um, to go back into your parameters. Um, if you have overhead and profit set on there, you may wanna reset the tax type to neither. Most insurance companies, they want that set to neither. Um, repricing it will will put that on by default back to overhead and profit on, task, on tax. 
And uh, also, if you are working out of the general loss template inside of Xactimate, you will want to go back in and just make sure that the report number is populating correctly. Sometimes if you reprice it, um, then it will make the report number set to zero. And you don't want that, though it's very unprofessional. That's all you really need to know about the six-figure macro, how to get it implemented. Again, once they're actually loaded into your Xactimate, all you got to do is open up the estimate that you plan on working on, go to project, copy from project, find the one that you're looking for. If, As you can see, I, there's a few on here with uh, different companies that I've worked with, so I've tailored them certain ways. Um, if you don't have a unique set of estimating guidelines, just keep it to the general. The general one should be the one where you feel most com most comfortable working inside. And it has all the line items that you, you like to use, and that's when you know you're working with a client that you know you could just estimate the way that you like to estimate, the way that you think is fair, not the way that they think is fair. Once you get it in there, all you gotta do is, uh, all you gotta worry about is just clicking that scope button, drop it in, Get rid of those line items you don't need, reprice at the end, and you got yourself a six-figure macro, a six-figure estimate, and you can start pulling in those six-figure numbers at the end of the year. Thank you guys so much, and uh, enjoy the six-figure macro.